I'm Virgil Alexander. I'm a native of the Globe, Miami area. I was neither born in Globe nor Miami. I was born in my parents' house in Central Heights in between the two communities. So my parents came here in the early 1940s and um, we lived in the government housing projects in Claypool to shortly after I was born. And after that, I li we lived in Central Heights, and that's where I grew up. So this is, um, you know, my old stomping grounds. And this uh, particular place that we're in, this is the gymnasium of Miami High School. And uh, I probably have been in this building 10,000 times for PE classes and for basketball games and other events, all our proms and dances and, and uh, smokers and various activities that we had. Globetrotters have been here and I saw a rally for Barry Goldwater in here in 1964. And so it has a lot of memories, just the building itself. Uh, the institution was really important uh, to me. The Miami Library, uh, my mother was an avid reader and got us starting when we were babies with little golden books. And um, as soon as we got a little older, she started bringing us to the library. And in the summers particularly, we would play outdoors all morning and go to the library in the afternoon and, and uh, read. Um, so it's, it played a big part in my interest in, in literature, in history, and uh, in the wild, wild west particularly. I grew to love mystery writing, and so my writing kind of combines history and mystery uh, together. In all of my books, there's uh, a lot of history and natural history of the setting that, that they're in. They're all written in eastern Arizona. Some of them are based, uh, one of them is based mostly in Globe, Miami, the one that uh, uh, murder in copper and the others are based in other parts but people stop and eat Mexican food in Miami or Globe and you know do things like that in my books so um, they're very much tied to the place that I'm from and the uh, the natural history as well the desert and the mountains and the cattle raising and the Indian culture and you know, the Spanish culture, all of these things are, are part of my story and they're in my books. I, I don't do a lot of outlining. I kind of put a, a general outline down to myself and say this is my story and these are the important points in it. But it's really spontaneous then as I write. And so I don't always know exactly what I'm going to be writing about. But as I come to something, for instance, in the current project I'm working on, um, I'm taking the adventures of a, an Apache medicine man who's also a police officer and, um, and dealing with his conflict that he has with, with, between the law and medicine that he needs to, to take care of. And that took a lot of research then. Once I got to the point that I was going to include that, and I had to go study and find out what their beliefs are and different things. And I've got a couple of Apache friends that I consult with, and they gladly share their information with me, fortunately. So yes, there is a lot of research, and some of it I know. You know, there's certain things that I know that where an Indian battle took place in 1882 here, and and why and what happened and so I don't have to look that up because I can just include that as in the as kind of part of the normal conversation between the people or whatever. But um, most things I, I do have to do a lot of research. Um, there's a lot of dealing with drugs in this new story as well and um, I had to go research you know, what kind of drugs make people forget things and what kind of drugs would uh, make people compliant to, to, you know, suggestion or whatever. And so once I figured all that out, then I could make it make sense in the story. So I research 
not only the history aspects, but the police acts and medical aspects of the story. The answer, because to me, there's, it, it's so inherently valuable. <laughs> um, I fell in love with history probably in the seventh grade um, at the Miami Memorial Library, the old library that's in the little building across the street there. And uh, I had um, come in and I'd gotten interested in the, in the Superstition Mountains and, and the Lost Dutchman Gold Mine. And Mrs. Sheves gave me the, the book on the Lost Dutchman Gold Mine. I read that and it, I was hooked. And then she said I might like uh, Zane Gray's writing because it's all, a lot of it's based in Arizona. And in the summer between my eighth grade and freshman year, I read all of the Zane Gray books that they had in the library, which was like 20 or 30 books. So, you know, it got me interested in, in the West and in history, and, um, and the history never left me. I, I started studying, and I've got a really large personal library of Arizona history books, and uh, I've read all of them and, and love it. Um, so the value of history to me is, is almost invaluable. You can't put a price on it. Uh, it saddens me that people aren't getting as much history in school as we once did and that they don't appreciate um, the value of history in their surroundings. You know, to know, it's, it's neat to know what took place in the place where you live or the place that you go for picnics or whatever, you know. And, um, and I love that kind of stuff. So um, I, I just can't emphasize to me enough that that history is very, very important. And it saturates my fiction writing and uh, my historic writing that I've done in uh, um, several papers and articles and, and stuff are, are strictly history. And they're, I try to do them in a way that makes them readable by uh, an ordinary person who's not a historian, but historically accurate with references so that people know this is really not just something we're making up. So I, I, my love of history and my love of the West and especially the Southwest, and especially Arizona, um, is integral to my, to my writing. Yeah, I have three equal main characters. Um, the first one is Sergeant Bryn Allred of the Graham County Sheriff's Department. Um, second is um, Al Victor, who is also a sergeant in the San Carlos uh, Apache Police Department. And then a relatively new deputy by the name of Manny Sanchez that works basically with, works for Bryn. Um, there are also several other uh, deputies that are there, but they're not main characters in it. And several other Indian policemen that are part of the recurring part of the story, but they're not the big part. So these three always, we, we follow them in every book. And we follow their personal lives to some extent. So their romances and their marriages, and their having children and all these things are, are, are flowing from one book to the other. Um, it's kind of the nice thing about creating a series is that you can keep your people, you know. And when I wrote Guam Curse, my first book, I actually kind of fell in love with my characters. I liked these people and I, I didn't want to have them go away. And so I continued them through the thing. And even some of the very minor characters are repeating. I have one, I have actually two old hermit guys that live in different parts of the state that uh, are interesting characters and, and are friends to the policeman. And they appear a little bit in every book you know, run across them. Um, I write about real places, so they eat at the Wyos El Rey, or they eat at the uh, Wyos in Miami, or at the Copper Hen, or something, you know, and so when people are reading it, they're reading about real places. I've actually won twice from the Public Safety Writers Association um, awards for uh, a published book, which was Saints and Sinners, that I submitted and then an award for an article that appeared actually in the Copper, 
what do they call it, the, the copper basin or copper, copper corridor newspaper here. And, um, and that won a, a first place for a, a, a true, a, a, a factual, what a nonfiction, for a nonfiction story. Um, so I, and I'm proud of that because the Public Safety Writers Association is made up of people that uh, have worked in public safety policemen, firemen, EMTs, judges, uh, coroners, <laughs> all kinds of people that are in there that are also writers. And so it's a tremendous resource for me. A lot of my research is contacting people like an FBI guy that um, was actually responsible for catching the, the Oklahoma City bomber as a member of the organization and I've actually bounced things off of him and gotten ideas from him to use. Um, so it's a, it's a neat organization. I'm really pleased that I've won some <laughs> awards from it. Um, the, the whole uh, series uh, really features Arizona. I don't know if you can see my covers here on my books very well or not, but you know, the copper, uh, murder in copper, features Sleeping Beauty Mountain here in the Globe Miami area on it. Uh, Saints and Sinners because the, uh, the smugglers from across the border come through the actual uh, national wilderness area at Aravipa Canyon. It features Aravipa Canyon. Um, this is a view of actually the Superior Basin, but it's painted and so it's, it's slightly adjusted. And then this view that I used here was just representative of the Son Sonoran Desert in the area where the Juan payroll happened, the robbery happened back in 1889. Um, in that book, I, uh, I write on that ancient <laughs> robbery that happened and what happened to the money, fictionally, and what happens when somebody finds it in modern times. It results in a murder and they can't really solve it till they understand where it came from. So the history in that one is absolutely essential to the story. But um, anyway, I'm very proud to, to uh, get an award from that group of people because of who they are. You know, it's kind of a neat thing. I was never in law enforcement, although my family was. Um, I had several uncles and cousins that were um, highway patrolmen and, and deputy sheriffs and uh, border patrolmen and, and my dad was a reserve officer and, <laughs> and so I heard this stuff all the time when I was growing up. Yes, here in the Globe Miami area, the books are for sale in the, in the William Plaza bookstore at the museum and um, also at the uh, Pickle Barrel over in Globe. Um, there are probably other places. Uh, Barnes & Noble carries it, and uh, it's on Amazon. So, you know, you can actually pick them up electronically that way or in print. Um, they're, they're not in hardback, but they're in the trade paperbacks, as you see here on the table.